Hi there. In this lecture, we see Alpha Zero again, Stockfish 8. This is a really interesting opening book position. So it's following a TSEC opening book. So D4 from the book. Both sides are following the book given by the top chess engines competition tournament standard. So this is all in book that they're having to follow. So this is the semi Slav defense. And we get the Shabalov attack move G4, which is super interesting to investigate. So a very aggressive thrust, so not classical development, really more dynamic. We have bishop b4. If knight takes g4, yeah, we're going to activate our rook. And it's just interesting. It's it's very interesting stuff. If knight f6, we're going to get a nice advantage. There's complexity, basically. It's, it's quite a respectable gambit position. So we have bishop b4 instead just trying to show that maybe this is a reckless pawn move it has like weaknesses instead we have bishop d2 but they're still in book at the moment and now queen e7 still in book rook g1 still in book bishop takes c3 still in book bishop takes c3 so we're reaching the start position still in book and white castles queen side black castles here now i like to point out something although this is the book move given Knight takes c3 does seem sensible in a way to get rid of white's bishop pair. White can play like this with knight e5. And if knight takes overall, white is actually better here, even though the pawns are potentially vulnerable. White's overall better. If bishop b7, and here, believe it or not, maybe the best move is actually king takes d7. There's method in the madness of king takes d7. So this position, the, the black king can make its way to the queen side and the queen is well positioned to play for example here queen c7 and black should be limiting white's advantage if queen takes d7 is played there's d5 straight off the bat and then the idea queen takes g7 and this position with king b1 is going to be in white's favor so anyway yeah, I just thought this was an important theoretical alternative knight takes c3 because white is permitted to maintain the dark square bishop the way it's played here. This is the book move given. So they, they gave black castling as the book move there. And we have book move again. Now here, finally, we're out of the book moves at move 12. So quite deep in. And black plays now b6. So we're really, this is like an investigation into the Shablov attack. So Grandmaster Shablov using this g4. So white does have this bishop pair. So even though it looks like a bit of a reckless pawn move, and it's a, it's a fun opposite side castling attacking game, basically. We have h4, bishop b7, and now a fun move, really fun, to try and open up things to the black king. What would you play here for 10 points? Okay. It's knight g5, so very aggressive play from alpha zero. We have knight takes g5. If knight df6, we can actually play f3. And here, the knight on g5 supports e4 quite well. So d takes, f takes, let's say e5. White can still maintain an overall advantage. So this situation, the bishop can come back with a vengeance. And this situation, you can see that it's starting to get a bit dangerous for black's king safety. So if we can open up the h file, this is not very pleasant for black to play. So yes, knight takes g5 was tried, h takes, queen takes g5. So what do we have for the pawn sacrifice? We've still got that nice bishop pair. We've got this semi-open h file to play with. f4 is played. We have queen e7, king b1, and now c5. Bishop d3, so this creates some dark square weaknesses. c takes d5, and now c takes d4. So quite a tense situation to explore here, actually. So for the pawn, we've got that bishop pair. We've got the same h file, just to recap. If e takes d5, queen h2, and this situation, we have f5. If g5, funny enough, we can plunge in with queen c7. This may be, may be the best way to play it, and then be super annoying with the queen on c7. And black's kind of pinned there. We have queen e4 check as an example. And then white could actually play d takes c5 and take out c5 just to leave 
black with a nice stated pawn, that would be a conversion of the advantage to a structural advantage. And white's piece is an overall better here. If bishop takes d5, e4, this situation, d5, is interesting. So if e takes, e takes, we've opened up our bishop, our light square bishop. But furthermore, we've actually made way for bishop c3 here. That is a beautiful dark square bishop in this line. And here, f5, you can see how this can be really dangerous for black's king safety. So if black's having to go into a pin here, this is going to end up losing material for black. So we're going to end up taking out f6 and winning material at the very least. In fact, instead of taking on d1 here, we can even go with queen h6 with the threat of rook f8 and queen g7 mating. If rook e7, bishop takes g6, this is just devastating for black's king safety. So yeah, there are some beautiful variations emerging here on e takes d5 or bishop takes d5. Some beautiful stuff. So c takes d4 was tried. We have e4, rook a c8. If e takes d5, we can play e5. And this situation, rook h1, is pretty nice. We can build up on the h file rather effectively, crudely and effectively. And in fact, to add weight to our attack, guess what we could play here for 10 points? So our h file isn't stopped in its tracks because we have bishop b4. And let's say queen d7 because if queen takes b4 yeah we're taking out h7 this is going to be too strong this position with our queen and rook on the h file we're threatening all sorts of things and we can get a winning pass pawn out of this if nothing else so let's say queen d7 e takes and again we're crashing through we've, we've just got a fantastic position we're going to be playing things like bishop e7 and rook takes h7 so okay so basically e takes d5 isn't that palatable we get a strong attack so we have rook a c8 tried queen h2 f6 to defend h7 a little bit more if e takes d5 here e5 and if f6 rook h1 queen g7 we can play actually e6 and here f5 we're getting a nice space advantage and protected past pawn here and we can play positionally. We, we can be content with this position, especially with the trebling on the h file. It's still really good. But with bishop or takes d4, this is an absolute beauty of a position. Protected pass pawn, beautiful bishop, big advantage. So f6 is tried. We have f5, e takes d5, f takes g6, h takes g6. If d takes e4 here, we have actually bishop b4. That's really handy. To try and drag the queen away because that would be mates if we put this on the board that would be a nice mate was supported by the pawn so here bishop b5 is annoying for black because then you know that that knight you know so this is even better than taking the rook basically on f8 if we play like this we can play queen takes h7 check and win material so okay h takes is tried rook h1 queen g7 and now really nifty maneuver what would you play here for 10 points to really supercharge the attack yeah bishop c2 well done so this reroutes the bishop on this sensitive diagonal knight e5 and now bishop b3 so black's collapsing here basically we have g5 so there is there are several ideas one of them is actually g5 to try and undermine the knight there, there are several ideas so black you know, does seem to try and stop g5 with, by playing g5 itself. So g5 is played. And we have bishop g3 now. Knight takes g4. So if rook f7, we're going to take on e5. And then e takes d5. This situation, e5 is vulnerable. But also we can use the h file for strong attacks. We don't want to play rook h7 there because of bishop d3 check picking up the rook but if we play a3 we can hold it together for a strong attack so for example like this we're getting a strong attack so after the check queen c6 our rook and queen our, our rook and queen are really helping 
for a strong attack. This would be uh, desperate for black to play queen g6. But yeah, there's too many threats here. But if queen g6, the idea would be bishop e4, but black's a piece down and it's not enough here. So we have knight takes g4, queen h3, knight e3. So why did the knight not go back to e5, you might ask? Well, we can snap it off. And then after queen e6, check this position, we're now threatening rook h8 and queen h8. Checkmate, and it's actually rather bad news here after bishop takes d5 check this situation we're winning material or if we look at this why is this so hopeless let's say bishop takes d5 funny enough this is a hopeless position even though you know blacks are pawn up but we have this nasty rook df1 it's it's very very powerful here so Black can't, you know, take here because we're just taking it, and that that rook's pinned. And if Queen e7, there are various ways of winning this position. One is Rook takes f7, and then and then here Queen e5 is overwhelming for Black because there's an unprotected piece on c8. This is like tactical downsides. We can pick up the Rook on c8, but also another neat way, in my view, is Rook h8 check, try and get the King away from the Queen. And then rook h7 check and taking out f7 so it's all really you know fun stuff on knight e5 essentially but we have knight e3 and this knight ends up being a kind of loose target in its own right after rook takes d4 there's too much pressure on the black position too many weaknesses king f7 and now bishop f2 and now here rook h8 this is essentially black's essentially giving up a piece in this whole variation yeah, it's giving up a piece because we have this forcing move, queen d7 check, another forcing move, taking the queens off, another forcing move, and then we're just picking up this knight. So it's a piece up for not too much here. So black can't even play d takes e4 because of rook d7 check, picking up the bishop. So rook e8, we have rook a4, a6, and now bishop takes b6 yeah it's a conversion here which is not too difficult so bishop c8 protecting the d7 square the king comes to help forcibly exchanging off rooks here so no time for e2 we're going to take and then there's no queening because our rooks behind the pawn so this is just a piece up basically for not too much now you might think well it's connected past pawns there yeah, it's not enough. White's got a potential pass, pass on the queen side, pass pawn on the queen side. So the game actually ends here. This is technically winning for white. The damage has been done. If it continued, let's say bishop d5, a4, we're going to just make progress gradually. Black's going to have to worry about bishop b6 here. Yeah, we, we're going to start winning one of the pawns soon. They're, they're nice dot square targets for our dot square bishop so it's a pretty hopeless position here so as example king e5 we could target a5 or king c6 we could target f6 we're going to start to dismantle black so it was resigned here this is the end of the game a relatively short and sweet game actually so just 45 moves so quite a violent variation the shabalov attack so if you want to bust up the semi-slav, which is one of the most kind of respectable, solid openings nowadays, this is a really interesting system. And it shows Alpha Zero's like given it approval. It's really played it really in an amazing way. So this was the book given to both of them. And yeah, we just get very, very exciting lines. It's interesting, yeah, black not taking out that bishop. But as we see, there are variations we're getting an advantage. But yeah, by white maintaining that bishop, the bishop comes alive later. It's ready to come alive later. So this situation is a lot of fun to start off with. It's a lot of fun for white. White definitely has some upsides here with the simulator and h file and the bishop pair to play with. So a fun game indeed. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this one. So the final position is actually... I'm just on move 45, Bishop D3. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much. 
All comments, questions, likes and subscribes, really appreciated. Thanks so much.